Here we're going to do some applications involving the law of signs. Okay, so for our first application, a surveyor spots the top of a mountain from two points. And here's our mountain, okay? Uh, two points P and R, and they are a thousand feet apart with indicated uh, angles of elevation. So 20 degree angle of elevation from point P and a 50 degree angle of elevation from point R. And the question is, how tall is the mountain? Well, first of all, what are we looking for? We're looking for the length of that line segment right there, right? Now, the height, that, that's a vertical um, quantity. And vertical, and this would be, of course, the ground, which is horizontal, and therefore, you have a 90 degree angle right there. Now, as soon as you see a 90 degree angle, that means you can use the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. So remember, right, angle trigono right triangle trigonometry. So if we're looking for h, right, the question is, how is h related to this angle, this first angle? Well, clearly it's the opposite. Now, as soon as you think about an angle in the opposite, well, for me, two things come to mind, either sine or tangent. Now, sine involves opposite over hypotenuse, right? And tangent involves opposite over adjacent. Now, the question is, which one do we want? Do we want sine or, sine or tangent? And the answer is we want sine. And the reason is because if you do opposite over the hypotenuse, this length is also connected to this triangle, which is the oblique triangle for which we have information, right? We have that this length is 1,000, and we have that angle being 20. So I'm going to write down, if I call this length x, I don't know that length yet, but I know that sine of 50 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? So it's h over x. Let's write that down. Sine of 50 degrees is h divided by x. Now that means that h, right, if we multiply both sides by x, h is equal to x multiplied by sine of 50 degrees. Okay, now let's think about this oblique triangle. So what I want to do is I want to involve x in an equation. I want to find out what x is because I, I want to put it here and then find out what h is. Notice how x is a line segment, right, or it's the side of a triangle opposite the 20 degree angle. When you see that, when you see an angle and the side opposite it, that often tells you that law of sines is a good choice for your problem. So law of sines says that sine of 20 degrees divided by x, let's write this down, sine of 20 degrees divided by x is equal to sine of any other angle divided, divided by its opposite side. Now, of course, I'm given a 1,000, so I want to make use of that. So if only we had this angle over here, right, because sine of this angle divided by a 1,000 would be equal to this. Can we get that angle? Well, can we get this angle? Sure, because these add to be 180, which means this angle has got to be 130. Now, all the angles of this triangle add to be 180, so 130 plus 20 is 150. That makes this angle up here 30 degrees, all right? And now that means that to complete the other side for law of sines, sine of 30 degrees divided by 1,000, right? So that's equal to sine of 30 divided by 1,000. And then I can solve this equation for x. Let's go ahead and do that. I get x sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1,000 times sine of 20 degrees. And now if you divide both sides of this equation by sine of 30, the sines of 30s cancel. And I get x is equal to all of that, right? Now I want to take all of that and I want to replace x here with that expression. Once I do that, at the very end, very end, I'll use my calculator. So here we go. Let me plug in the x, right, which is all of this. It's 1,000 sine of 20 divided by sine of 30. Okay, just that, that part alone was just my x. And don't forget, you have to multiply that by sine of 50 degrees. Okay, so when I do all that on my calculator, I get my h. So my h is about equal to 524 feet. And that would be my answer. Okay, so with law of sines, the important thing is that, uh, or rather when you're doing an application involving law of sines that, uh, where the problem involves the height of an object, 
you often want to draw in a, uh, a line segment if it's not already given to you. And what's important is that that, that line segment is perpendicular to the ground if, it, it's, if, if, it, if this is the height of the object. And once you have that, once you have a 90 degree angle, then you can make, make use of right triangle trigonometry and connect it to an oblique triangle that you're working with using law of sines. This is a really common scenario. Okay, let's try another really common application involving law of sines. This type of problem is called a bearing problem. So first of all, I need to discuss with you what we mean by bearing. So if somebody says, or if we read in a problem uh, this, north 25 degrees east, what that's telling you is if you were looking north, that you rotate 25 degrees east. So from the middle, from the origin, if you will, you rotate 25 degrees east. So this right here would be north, but then rotated 25 degrees east, okay? And sometimes you're given something like this, south, 80 degrees west. Well, that means from here, you look south, but then you rotate 80 degrees west. So that would be something like this, right? Where that is south, and then 80 degrees, 80 degrees west. Okay. So now that we know what, how to interpret this information, let's go see. Let's go ahead and um, see a problem that makes use of that. Okay. So we swim from point A to point B at a bearing of north 32 degrees west. Okay. So north, but then rotate 32 degrees west. That means this angle right here, right? This angle is 32 degrees. That's what they're telling us. Okay, and then what? So we make it to point B. And then we swim to point C at a bearing of north 40 degrees east. So we're swimming along this, but that bearing is north 40 degrees east. So if I draw in a little um, line segment indicating north, like so, right? That angle is 40 degrees right, because it's giving me my bearing along this little line segment that we're swimming on, or along. Okay, then we make it to point C, then back to point A, 500 feet away, 500 feet away. So we make it back to point A, and they tell us that point A is directly south of point C. So the question is, how far did we swim? So we basically swam to point B, then to point C, and then finally back to point A. Now we already obviously know this distance, right, 500 feet. The question is, what are these two lengths? So what is x, right? Let's call that length x, and let's call this length y. We have to find those lengths, and then add them up, and add it to 500 to get the total distance we swam. Okay, so bearing problems are, when we, we love to see bearing problems, and the reason is because you can build a grid of parallel lines. So for example, do you remember how we said this was you know, north? Well, if I extend that going the other direction, then all of a sudden I'm extending that south, right? Like so. So this line, we were told that point A is directly south of point C. So this line is parallel to that line, right? Because this is running north-south, and so is this. Now, that is a huge advantage in bearing problems, okay? So you, you always want to do that. Draw as many horizontal, or draw as many parallel lines as you can. That's, a, that's the important step with bearing problems. Okay, now once you do that, you make use of, this is a really common result as well. Whenever you have two parallel lines, do you see how this line cuts right here? This line cuts those parallel lines. These angles, this angle right here and that angle right there, these are called alternate interior angles. And from geometry, those angles are the same. That is, this angle is 32 degrees as well. So let me ask you, do you see any other, this, we already know this angle, right? Do you see any other pair of alternate interior angles? Sure, because this line segment cuts the parallel lines as well. So that angle must be the same as this angle right there. So that's 40 degrees as well. So basically what that's telling us is that, well, let's see, if this is 40 and that's 32, okay, this angle, and you could, you could have found this angle by adding those and subtracting it from 180, the same thing. This angle has to be what? Let's see, 40 plus 32 is 72. This angle must be 108. So that's very common in bearing problems where you can get most of the angles right away just by drawing in some parallel lines. 
Okay, so now it's time to make use of, or to, to look for x. And I have information, I have the angles, and I have sides opposite the angles. So that means I'm, I'm gonna use the law of sines. So for example, sine of 108 degrees divided by 500 is equal to, well, sine of 40 divided by x, right? Because 40 degrees is the angle opposite x. So if I solve this for x, I get x sine of 108 is equal to 500 sine of 40. Now if we divide both sides by sine of 108, I get x is equal to 500 divided by, or multiplied rather by sine of 40. And then all that divided by sine of 108 degrees. And on my calculator, I get x is about equal to uh, 337.9 feet. Okay, and I can set up a similar equation for y because I know the angle opposite it, 32 degrees. So likewise, I can say, I can write sine of 108 degrees, right, divided by 32 again, or sorry, make that divided by 500 is equal to sine of 32 degrees divided by y. And if I cross multiply again, y sine of 108 is equal to 500 sine of 32. So now I get y is equal to 500 sine of 32 degrees divided by sine of 108. And I get y is about equal to, in this case, it's going to be 278.6 using my calculator feet. So what's the total distance? Well, Let's add them all up. We get 337.9 plus 278.6 plus finally 500, right? The last leg of our journey. And that's equal to 1,116.5 feet. That's our total distance. Okay, so to recap, Bearing problems. First, draw in as many parallel lines as you can. Make use of some results from geometry to get your angles. And use law of signs. Okay, until next time.